Hello, welcome back. This is Kench1913, and we're let's playing Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver 2. In the last episode, we began the Dark Forge, or the Light Forge. And now, to open up these doors, we need to use the Dark Reaver. If you don't have the Dark Reaver, you can't open up that door. <clears throat> so now we have that reflecting over there. That should open up the big, uh, the big, uh, thing. Now we just need to move this thing back over here. So yeah, we, we're almost done with the the, uh, the light reaver or the light forge. Very close to having it done. episode's going to be a little longer because of a uh, cutscene at the end. Now we need to come over here. I'll turn this thing. Well, actually, let's come over here first. Go that thing. And put the Dark Reaver in here. Which should lower this pillar, leading to that mirror so the light can go at it. And then we gotta come over here and open this door. And look at that, the, the uh, Dark Soul Reaper is awesome. This reminds me of something from Zelda, definitely. And now look at that, we have both crystals with light shining on them, and that opens the door. Now we can use the Dark Reaver to get over there. But anyways, uh, yeah, we're pretty close to having this bad boy done. Yeah, see, it opens up that door. So yeah, this, uh, this wasn't too bad. Actually, the the forge that we're getting next is probably my favorite. The uh, light reaper, I like it the best. And you'll see why pretty soon. Yeah, look at all these guys. It's on stop. And we don't want to get stuck in that area, so we want to back the hell off. Oh, look at that, that guy just got murdered. So now what you want to do is shoot the TK ability at him and grab this thing. Thanks, Pokemon. Now we want to get the hell out of here before that thing shoots us. want to do is go all the way back. All the way back. Yep. Raziel was not a sprinter, that is for sure. He's a distance runner, you know what I mean? Alright, now we put this thing over here.
Series Light. Look at this, huh? Made like a sun. I plunged the Reaver into the forge and imbued the blade with the elemental power of light. Thus armed, I now had the means to re-enter the stronghold and finally use Mobius's time-streaming device to accomplish my own ends. Hell yeah. It's all about the ends. And as you can see, um, the Light Reaver, it, it's nice because it, it, it shines like a little bit of light around Raziel, which is pretty damn awesome, I think. It really helps in this dark game. Helps uh, greatly. And I don't know what else it does besides shine light and open the crystals. Like if you shoot it at someone, I don't know exactly what it does. But we need the light reaver to open this thing. Now look, there's a crystal just like the crystal on top of the Seraphan Keep. to hit it with our light reaver. And I think we can only hit it from over here, I think. Oh, we got distance enough back to shoot it, I think. Yeah, but I love the little effect that they put in this game with that thing. It's pretty awesome. Really a nice little touch. So let's get the hell out of here. I don't think we'll ever come back here. And yeah, isn't that pretty neat? The light weaver can kind of act like a torch. back into the Seraphan Keep. Now what we need to do actually is go back because somehow someone must have locked the door on us. So we have to go back to the wheel over there and turn it. Alright, here we go. Turn that wheel. Yeah, so I hope you guys are enjoying this game. I'm enjoying playing it again. It's it's awesome. I can't wait till like the the finale. Like not even the finale, like the final third of the game. It's just so awesome. We're gonna meet a super cool guy and then we're gonna all kinds of awesomeness is gonna happen between and after meeting that dude and then going to the end of the game. It's just I love the ending of this game. Well not that I love the ending battles of this game. Alright, so... We gotta shoot this thing up here. And now we'll open the door! Yay! And basically, um... After we're done with the Seraphan Keep here, we're about a third of the way through the game. Uh, let's save it on C. 
But yeah, we're about we'll be about a third of the way through the game, which is pretty damn nice. This game's pretty short too. I think it'll probably only take like 30 or so parts, maybe. Alright, now we just need to go through the Serapan Keep over here. Yeah, and basically this game takes place in three three different time periods. All in the same sort of landscape. Alright, now that we're in the Seraphane Keep, which way do we gotta go? I think we gotta go this way. I kind of like how they, they put new doors over here, but I kind of don't like it. Because it's a little confusing. Of like where you've already been and where you have to go. Like we know we have to get back into the inner... Whoa, we just don't hit me like that. We know we have to get back into the inner chamber, but it's kind of weird where we start out. Two arms is right. You've got two of them. I just love how they burst into like a thing of light. Let's pick up a weapon because we're getting pretty close to the red. Now if I wanted to I could just sit here and wait for that thing to go down. But I'm not gonna bother. like it hitting me while I'm trying to take souls and shit. Sucks. Nice. That guy is afraid right there. I'm not even gonna bother killing him. guy here. Just get away from me. Stop it. I said stop it. You're dead now. I kill you. I'll try to jump. There we go. Anyways, this next scene that's coming up is basically the paradoxical scene. The scene that the game, the future, time itself wants to happen. Show yourself, Cain. Here, Raziel. Everything is decided here. You cannot comprehend the magnitude, the rapture, and the tragedy of this moment. And yet you must, if Nosgoth is to be dragged from the wreckage of its damnation. I understand only this, Cain. That you and Mobius have impelled me to this moment simply means I can trust neither of you. I don't know who's pulling the strings, but it no longer matters. Because I'm cutting them. I set my own course from here. If it were only that simple. Your fatalism is tiresome, Cain. And profoundly ingrained, Raziel. You must understand. Our presence here doesn't alter history. You and I meet here because we are compelled to. We have always met here. History is irredeemable. 
Drop a stone into a rushing river. The current simply courses around it and flows on as if the obstruction were never there. You and I are pebbles, Raziel, and have even less hope of disrupting the time stream. The continuum of history is simply too strong, too resilient. Except, then how do we explain William here? The beloved boy king turned tyrant. In my youth, I witnessed William's rise to power and his transformation into the nemesis who laid waste to Nosgoth. Keep your distance, Kane. Years later, I stumble upon a chance to journey back in history, unaware that the entire affair has been carefully orchestrated by Mobius. In my wisdom, I seize this opportunity to murder the young king before he can ravage Nosgoth, and thereby provide the catalyst Mobius needs to ignite a genocidal war against our race. I warn you, no further. This one reckless act unravels the skein of history. The nemesis never becomes the nemesis. William dies a martyred saint. I, the vampire assassin, become the author of my own species' extinction, and Mobius profits from it all. I destroyed a tyrant only to create one far worse. But how can it be so? How, if history is immutable? The answer is here in this room, Raziel. Mobius propelled William and me together, but ensured first that we were both armed with the Soul Reaver. The Reaver is the key. Two incarnations of the Blade meet in time and space. A paradox is created, a temporal distortion powerful enough to derail history. Is this your sorcery? Not mine, Raziel. Yours. You have nothing to fear from me, Raziel. You hold all of the cards. Then perhaps I should test your sincerity. If what you say is true, you should be terrified. I could kill you here and now. And so you do. Razia. What's happening? We're hurtling towards our destinies, Raziel. What you feel is the pull of history rushing to meet us. This is where history and destiny collide. If you truly believe in free will, Raziel, now is the time to prove it. Kill me now, and we both become pawns of history dragged down the path of an artificial destiny. I was ordained to assume the role of Balance Guardian in Nosgoth, while you were destined to be its savior. But the map of my fate was redrawn by Mobius, and so in turn was yours. This is madness! Fight it, Raziel. This moment does not have to be an ending. It can become a prelude. I can't! You can, Raziel. Look inside and see that it is so. You have the power to reshape our inevitable futures. It may yet be possible for me to assume my role as Balanced Guardian and return the Pillars to their rightful inheritors. To the Vampires. And this is the destiny you have urged me to discover. I don't know what game you and Mobius are playing, Kane, but I refuse to be your pawn. 
Unlike you, I still revere whatever shred of humanity I've managed to preserve. You will not use me as the instrument of your messianic delusions. Very well, Raziel. I'll not ask you to trust me. Your truths are for you to discover alone. Humble words for one who presumes to teach me a lesson at every turn. And continue your journey and learn your own lessons, Raziel. Remember, Mobius led you here, but you walk away unfettered. A champion of free will and conqueror of false histories. There is much more for you to unearth, if you have the heart for the truth and the will to see it. Okay, so, you know what, I will explain that scene and everything in the next episode.